All right, so in this video, we're checking out the Gochi Fix oscilloscope plus multimeter plus a waveform generator. This is a three in one device, and a lot of people refer to these as scope meters because it has the multimeter function uh, with the oscilloscope. Now, this is, I think, under $200, and there's a lot of these on the market, of course, that are you know, coming out of China. Um, Obviously, I'm not going to judge it based on how accurate it is because I'm not going to be able to do that. Uh, you have to have very expensive equipment to to gauge the accuracy of the calibration of all of the measurements that you're going to get from this kind of a device. So if you're a professional, you, you need very precise equipment, you're just going to have to fork over the money and get something like a $500 uh, Fluke um, multimeter and one of those like very expensive oscilloscopes that typically range between $1,000 to $10,000. So obviously, if you're in that sort of category, this, this device is not going to be for you. This is going to be for people more like myself. I consider myself a hobbyist, an amateur, a beginner. Uh, this is going to be good for people that just want to maybe do some diagnostics uh, on equipment in, in around your house. Maybe you don't want to necessarily go and pay for an electrician, uh, but you have some know-how on how to um, at least take some measurements of stuff and see if uh, so you know, do some basic diagnostics with something like this. For that, it'll be fine. I think that um, you know if you're not using it for professional use, this is going to work out really well. I've already been using it as, as you said, I've taken it out of the box. I'll share everything that comes with it, and I'm not going to cover every last function in this one because it would, this video would be like three hours long. I'm going to cover some of the basic stuff on here and give you my thoughts on the interface, how it's been functioning, how I've liked it so far. Just a quick look at the back of the box here. I'm not going to read all that. You can pause the video if you want to see all the little specs. So here's the rest of the stuff that came in the box. You have a USB-C to USB-A cable. This is for charging and there's a charging port on the side. I'll show you that here in a second. You get a full user's manual, pretty thick, and all of it is in English. And um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, we'll cover some of the basic functions of this in uh, this video. I think there is a PDF version of this uh, instruction manual on the product page if you want to check that. And it's only in English, so if you need other languages like French or German or Chinese, uh, this one only comes in English for some reason. And it does come with this sort of quick start guide, and this one here is for the multimeter. Um, of course, I will show you how this works in real practice, but if you want to pause the video and take a look at it on your own, feel free to do so. And on the other side here is the oscilloscope operation, and of course I will demo that here in this video as well. It did come in this nice little carrying pouch, but it's just enough space for just the meter itself, but not any of the test probes. So this unit included one oscilloscope probe, uh, although there's two channels on here, I'm only going to be able to demo one because only one's included. Uh, these aren't too expensive. If you want to use a second channel uh, for your diagnostics, you can pick up these for about 10 bucks on Amazon. If you need a link for the extra one, let me know in the comments and I'll help you out. But here is the little accessories that came with the probe, and that's a little screw there for adjusting the calibration of the probe. Now this came with a user's guide, and it's a 1x, 10x oscilloscope probe, P6000, and it's from this series here. I'm not 100% sure which one this is, and it's not labeled on here, but these are the uh, specs here on the back for all of those models. Yeah, I, um, if I figure it out, I'll, I'll put a little annotation up on the screen right at the time of the video that I'm recording this. I'm not 100% sure, but for my purposes, I don't think it's going to matter too much. And then here's the accessory kit that I just showed you. For the multimeter, you get a couple of uh, positive negative test probes here, and you see that I have these already connected down at the bottom. The cables on these are a little on the stiff side. Not the worst I've seen, but certainly could be better. But of course, at this price point, um, you know, there's only so much you can ask for. The uh, last cable here has a couple alligator clips here for positive and negative, and that goes into one of the BNC connectors up top. This is the uh, signal generator. So looking at the device itself here, it has an internal battery and actually they're removable. So you take the screw off here, you can take this panel off and there's two 18650 lithium ion cells in here. I think they're 2000 milliamp hours each. So pretty decent. It's going to last a really long time. I, uh, my, one of my multimeters I, I've been using for years uses like, uh, I think 
three AAA batteries. I have to constantly replace them. It's kind of annoying. So this will be my go-to. Now, the interface here is all of these buttons here and they're kind of um, soft touch. So you, you have to press and you get a uh, basically a, like a audio audible signal that, that you've pressed it. And I'm not sure how I feel about this guy. I'm still kind of getting used to it. I'm more used to like the old school, like the, the dial, the physical dial that you rotate. Uh, but it still works. Um, I, I, I haven't misclicked or anything like that. It's just a little unusual. Uh, but uh, yes, yeah, again, I'm not 100% sure how I feel about the interface itself and the buttons. Some of you might like it, some of you might hate it. Just have a collapsible stand here in the back, which I like, which you can just set it up here and get your readings. Very nice uh, color LCD screen here for all your readings and, and all, for your different functions. Uh, the top here has the three BNC connections. So channel one is there on the left for the oscilloscope. Channel two, I obviously don't have the probe, so that's empty. And then the generator out, that's a signal generator for that cable. And then down here are your test probes for your multimeter. And what's nice is depending on what function you are, and so I'm currently in voltage, which is the default, tells you where you need to plug in the probes. These four plugs uh, correspond to these four down here. So obviously you want the red and the black like that, just like in the diagram. So if I switch to say current, then you want to switch the red over from the right to this one over here. Just a quick look at where the functions are. So obviously this one here is voltage. This one here is on a, like a rotation. So as you press it, it's going to change. So the first one here is going to be resistance and it's labeled here on top. So it's very easy to know if you go to the secondary functions here. So the t this uh, top row is for the secondary sub functions within that function of this button. So this one is resistance. This one here is diode. I'm not going to be able to test that because I don't think I have any diodes uh, right now. This one here is for the continuity checker. So uh, they're calling it continuation, but I, I call it continuity checker. And then the one on the right here is for capacitance. That's the F4. The function here at the bottom is current, which I just showed you. And then the AWG is for the uh, signal output there. So you got a signal generator and currently as you see, it's set to sine wave and you can set the frequency and all that. I'll show you that here momentarily. All right, so I'm going to go and demo some of the functions here. Now, uh, I'm not going to cover any of the safety issues uh, because uh, there's just too many of these and uh, the video will be way too long. There's plenty of other videos on YouTube regarding uh, common sense electrical safety stuff, but common, I'm just going to put a, just an overall blanket disclaimer here. Do not try and duplicate anything I'm doing here. It might be dangerous and you may not understand the safety implications. I've already taken all the precautions here myself, but I'm not going to go into the explanations. So I'm not responsible if you try and duplicate anything I'm doing here and you destroy your equipment because uh, there's just too many variables involved to explain every little detail. It will be a two hour video. So just like a disclaimer, I'm just going to demo based on my safety knowledge. I am not going to explain everything. Just don't try and do it on your own because if you don't know what you're doing, you could damage things. All right, so can check check the voltage of this. Uh, this is one of my camera batteries. All right, so yeah, this one's reading pretty accurate. Just charges up to full and it's 4.149 volts. Okay, let's switch this over to resistance and I've got a one kilo ohm resistor here. I got a bunch of these here and I'll just see how well this reads. And yeah, it's reading 0.981 kilo ohms. So it's not, it's not a hundred percent accurate, but it's pretty close. And you can see that in the uh, settings here, I'm using the auto range feature. So it will adjust the units um, automatically for you. Okay, I got a uh, 1000 microfarad capacitor here. So let's go ahead and switch this over to capacitance. So these values should increase as the capacitor charges up. So go ahead and I got the leads on now. There we go, it's building up the charge. Already up to, uh, oh, yeah, just went over, went over uh, one. I guess yeah, it's, milli, it's reading one millifarad now instead of 1000 microfarads. It's a little bit over, so the auto range jumped it up uh, in terms of units. So that looks pretty accurate. And in terms of checking continuity, you basically take the two leads, put them together, and you should hear a beep and a, a light. So there we go. 
So that's working. So if you want to check continuity on, you know, if you have a short somewhere, it's pretty standard stuff for a multimeter and it looks like it's working. All right, do we test the signal generator and I'm actually going to test it against the oscilloscope. So I'm going to take our leads and connect them. So connect the negative to negative. So here we have a sine wave at one megahertz frequency. If we switch over to the oscilloscope, we should be able to see a signal here. And we're going to hit the auto button here. There we go. So that'll find the right range. And you can see here that yeah, it is reading one megahertz. But to see if I want to adjust that, go back here to the signal generator. Oh, you're going to go hit the F2 here. Then you can put in your frequency. So if I want to change it from one megahertz to say, let's say I have to use this dial here. So another thing I don't particularly enjoy about this one, but change it to five, let's say five megahertz. There we go. So it's reading or outputting five megahertz now. Let me switch back over to the oscilloscope. You can see that we'll need to hit, it, it says five megahertz there on the screen. So that's reading correctly. But if you want to get a nice clean, view of the sine wave, put it on auto, and you can see it's a little bit of um, variation there in the signal that's coming from the uh, signal generator. You can, see, you can visually see that in the uh, oscilloscope itself, and it kind of bounces around between 5 and 4.9 it looks like. All right, so one of the things I do plan on using this meter for, or the oscilloscope part of the meter, is testing the um, inverters on these power stations. So on some of the really, really cheap power stations, and actually for those, I tend to not review those at all. Um, they have like weird problems where they, you can kind of hear them when the output power and then like the device that you're using starts making noises like clicky sounds. That means the the uh, inverter is not clean. It's not actually producing a pure sine wave, and which is really bad for that device. Depending upon how bad or how unclean the power is, that device will wear down and eventually fail. So you want a, when they say it's got a pure sine wave inverter, you, um, you really want one that's got clean power. And then you can use the oscilloscope to check that. So I'm gonna be using that for future videos on my power station reviews, and you can check that playlist if you want to see some of the other ones. But uh, this one here I reviewed a few months back. It's a small little um, like backpack portable power station from Egritech, and it says it has a pure sine wave inverter, 300 watts. We're gonna go ahead and test that. So I'm gonna turn this on. And I'm not gonna turn on the AC part yet. Now I created a special plug here so that I can get my leads onto the, basically it's going to be the hot and the neutral on this AC plug. And I don't think it matters which one you put it on. So, okay, and go ahead and switch it over to the oscilloscope. And I'll plug this in. And right now it's currently off, we'll power it up. There we go. So we have a signal here, but we have to hit the auto button to get this into range. And there you go. So this is the actual signal from the inverter that's on this power station. So it's at 59.9 Hertz, which is good for North America. And that is a very clean looking sine wave there. Um, if you have unclean power, it'll be spiky and I'm just kind of like inconsistent looking, but you can see it's very clean looking. Yeah, so I think that's going to cover for all the demos and overall I've been using it for a week or so now. Everything's been working out great. I really like the display. Everything functions exactly as expected. It's pretty easy to use, fairly really straightforward. I actually didn't have to consult a manual for every little detail. Of course, there's a few a few features I probably may want to look into that I um, may use in the future, but for my purposes, uh, I pretty much demonstrate all the things that I would use this for. And uh, I think for most people, it's going to be covering uh, pretty much everything. Now, in terms of the overall the build here, it's pretty good. Everything is electrically isolated, so there's no metal parts exposed, which is what you want for a uh, multimeter. Um, it's not terribly heavy, although it's definitely a lot heavier than the small, really old multimeter that I, I've been using, like an analog one for some time. But yeah, the uh, the digital, a uh, little 
uh, mini oscilloscope feature on this one is going to be pretty useful for judging whether these power stations are producing clean power and I'm going to be using that in future videos so you'll see this in those future videos but if you guys want to check it out this will be a down a link down in the video description uh, that'll do it for this video uh, got any questions comments let me know in the comment section below and I'll talk to you guys in the next one